Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, kind of an odd chapter. This is called Factoring the Difference of Two Squares. Now, at some point, well, let's, let's look at this first. The difference of two squares. Well, you know what a square is, right? All these numbers are squares. In other words, 36 is the square of 6. 9 is the square of 3. 16 is the square of 4. 25 is the square of 5, and so on. So when you rec and see a number, you should recognize that it's a square. In other words, if somebody, somebody tells you, oh, this is 64, you should go, oh, that's 8 times 8. The square root of 64 is 8. You'll need that, that ability to, to solve these kind of problems. Of course, we know what this word means, right? What does the word difference mean in arithmetic? Subtraction, right? Okay, so we have something odd that happens. At some point in the past, who knows when, uh, people looked at two squares and they realized, let's say, I don't know who it was, but, you know, look, I subtract this. 36 minus 9, of course, the answer to that is 27. 16 minus 25, that is going to be negative 9. And 100 minus 81, that is 19, right? Well, at some point, somebody started piddling around with this and discovered that you could actually take this, the square root of that number, and the square root of this number. And what you could do is you could just line them up next to each other. And kind of, let's put them together. And then line it up again. We'll put them together. And you could go, okay, well, let's see here. Uh, I got six, I could do six plus three, and then I could do six minus three. And if you do this, which is nine, times this, which is three, you get the answer of 27. Kind of weird, all right? Let's see if it works for this one. 16 minus 25, well, let's just take a look. What are the squares of those numbers? 16 is four, 25 is five, Put them right next to each other. You do a plus with one of them, a minus with the other one. Well, 4 plus 5 is 9. You multiply that by 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. And 9 times negative 1, well, golly gee, there's the answer. All right, we'll try this last one. Okay, 100 minus 81. What is the square root of 100? All right, it's 10. So you put that twice. Square root of 81. 9. All right, we can put it plus 1 and then minus the other one. 10 plus 9 is 19. 10 minus 9 is 1. 19 times 1, there it is. And at some point, somebody went, wow, this works every single time. Well, if it works with numbers, we can say that it also works with x's and y's and a's and all that stuff. So, this is what you want to write down or memorize or however you want to do it. Anytime you have a number that is squared, you subtract another number that is squared. One way to factor this is to break it up into this. Now, after you've copied this down, look, look and see what happens here, basically. In other words, you're taking the square root of x squared and you're putting it twice, there and there. You're taking the square root of y squared and putting it twice here and there, but you're making one of them plus, one of them minus. Now, let's actually take a look and see what happens when you do this. Okay, let's pretend like this is the problem they ask us to do in your algebra book. So you go, okay, I'll take care of the x first. So x times x is x squared. x times negative y is negative xy. Okay, done. All right, y times x is positive, we'll call it xy. And y times, a positive y times a negative y is a negative y to the second power. Now if you notice, these two middle terms cancel. So you're just left with x squared minus y squared, which is, you know, what we started off in the beginning. Okay, so you know how to do this starting this way and getting x squared minus y squared. Your only job now is to take this and you see that there are two squares. Now again, it's two squares, okay, and it has to be a difference. There's subtraction. When you see that, you can chop it up into two pieces that look like what we have there. So let's try a couple of these, all right? All right. Well, let's do 64 minus 16. I mean, you know, we don't have to do it this way, of course. We can just do the you know, arithmetic and go, okay, 64 minus 16. Let's see, R of that, that's going to be 5. So 14 minus 6 is 8. 5, 48 is the answer, okay? Well, we can also look at 64 and 16, and we recognize both of those are squares, right? What's the square root of 64? 8, right? The square root of 16? 
4, right? So put them both there twice. We put a plus there and put a minus there, right? 8 plus 4 is 12. 8 minus 4 is 4. And we already said the answer was 48. 12 times 4, 48. There it is. All right? And this is a little different. This is different. It looks very similar, but we've added something to it. Well, all we need to do is recognize, okay, well, yeah, that's the difference, okay? Those are both, you know, everything's a square, so we can just put, okay, that's an 8 there and an 8 there, and there's a 4 there and a 4 there, and we know it's going to be a plus and a minus, okay? Well, the square root of 64, we already have that. The square root of x squared, in other words, what times itself will give you x squared, and the answer is x. And what times itself will give you y squared, and the answer is y. And there you go. That's how you factor it. That's it. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at this. And this is a weird one. 9 minus 81. Ugh. Okay. Well, if you did the, you know, the math using algebra, you would know that, of course, that's 81 minus 9, which is 72. But it'll have a negative attached to it. That's our answer. Okay. So all we do is we do the same thing. We break this up into two binomials. All right. The square root of 9, 3. Put, in, put it twice. Put this a plus and that a minus. And the square root of 81, 9, right? Okay. Well, 3 plus 9 is 12. 3 minus 9 is negative 6. And of course, that equals that there. They're not going to give you this right here or this. We're just going to focus on these in the book. Okay. 99% of them in the book are like this, or if not all of them. Okay. Well, if you know how to do 9 minus 81 like this, then if you did 9a squared and b squared, you'd just be doing exactly the same thing, except you'd be adding, you know, the a and the b. So we know 9, the square root of 9 is 3, put that twice, and put a plus and a minus. The square root of 81, we said, was 9. <coughs> okay, now we need to focus on this. What's the square root of a squared? a. The square root of b squared? b. And that is it. If you ever are bored or want to check your answers, you can always take this and multiply it through all the way. If you get this as your answer, when the middle two terms cancel out, you know you're right. All right. Here's one that they've kind of gallywagged a little bit for us, but let's uh, copy that down. And what we'll do this time, since we look at both, and we go, oh, what is that? I'm not used to seeing it that way. Well, let's just, let's just rewrite it. So the x squared is in the front and the negative 4 is there. So we have, that's a square of something. 4 is a square of 2. That's a, you know, that's a difference. So we can do this. All right? So all we need to do is set it up as two binomials. We know the square root of x squared is x. And we know the square root of 4 is 2. And all we do is attach a plus and a minus. And there we go. That's it. All right? How about this one? Kind of funky looking, but you know, we recognize is 49 a square? Yes, it is. Is m squared a square? Yep. How about a squared? Of course. Okay. Is that a difference there? Yep. So we got it. Okay. And here we go. So the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of m squared is just m. The square root of, of course, we're going to put a plus there and a minus there. And the square root of a squared is just a. So there we go. That's as far as you can go. You just factored it. All right, let's take a look at this one. A little bit different. In the wrong order, that's what's different. Okay, so let's go ahead and rewrite this so it looks like a subtraction problem. 25y squared minus 36a squared. All right, now we can go ahead and set it up. The square root of 25, 5. The square root of y squared, y. This will be a plus, that will be a minus. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of a squared is a. And there we go. Got it. Okay. All right. Let's try this one. This is a little strange looking compared to our other ones. Look at that thing. All right. You can go ahead and copy this down in the right order, which means your 49a squared will be in the front. All right. I'll just do that. Now, you have noticed, I'm sure, that this, is, this looks different. Okay, well, uh, it works. There's nothing strange about this at all uh, once you think about it for a second. Is 49 a square? Is that a square? Yes. Is that a square? Yes. Okay, now here's the question Is x to the sixth power a square? In other words, is there something that times itself?
gives you x to the sixth power. And you probably have guessed, and of course the answer is x to the third power, right? And don't get confused. Now remember, when you multiply terms like this, that's not x to the ninth power. When you get that, in other words, this means, x to the third power means this, right? And that times x to the third power will give you x to the sixth power. So anytime you see a, a, an x to, or a y or whatever, you're going to have to have, uh, well, in, in our case, we'll have uh, even numbers to make it a little easier on you. But let's go ahead and set it up again. Okay. And 49, the square root of 7 is 7. A squared, of course, we know that's an A. All right, and we'll do A plus and A minus. 36, it is 6. X to the 6th power will be X to the 3rd power each time. You tell me. What's the answer to this? What is the square root of y to the fourth power? What times itself will give you y to the fourth? And no doubt you said y to the second. And there we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do, go to the second half of this lesson, which is more probability. And this time, you know, we've done moments before where you've actually taken a bunch of marbles and you went, oh, I picked a blue marble. Now I put it back and I mix it up again and then the probability didn't change. This time, we're going to do probability without replacement, which means you're going to take a bunch of stuff from, from a bag, we'll take one out, and you go, okay, over to the side. I'm not going to put that back in the marble. Now, let's say you have you know, 20 marbles, and you had uh, you know, I don't know, 10 black marbles, you know, and you went, okay, what are the, what's the probability of picking a black marble? Well, at first, it was 10 out of 20, right? So let's say you went in there, and you picked a black marble, and you went, Oop, I'm done with that, I'm, I'm leaving it. Now, how many black marbles do you have left in the bag? Nine, right? Okay, now how many marbles total do you have left in the bag? 19, right? So if they say to you, what's the probability of picking another black marble? It wouldn't be 10 out of 20 or half. This time, since you didn't replace it, it would be nine out of 19. And remember what happens when you, you know, when they ask you questions, what's the probability of doing this and then doing this, you have to multiply those fractions together to get your final answer. So make sure you do that. Okay, here's one. Here's one, uh, an urn contains three black marbles. Let's just put B, 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 and five white marbles. W, 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 and W. Okay, marble is drawn at random and replaced. Then a second marble is randomly drawn. Okay, replaced. All right, that's the key on this one. So a marble is drawn at random and replaced. Then a second marble is randomly drawn. Okay, what's the probability that both are black in this case? All right, well, first off, let's do this. What's the probability that the first marble is drawn at random is black from this group? It's three out of eight, right? Okay, now it's replaced. There it is. Okay, we mix it up again. What's the probability that both are black? Well, it's going to be the same probability, right? Since we've replaced the marble. So we're going to multiply that by 3 eighths again. So the answer will be 9 out of 64. That's the probability that you will draw two black marbles out of that group. In other words, you black, draw one and you place it and you look away and you do this. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Now look at B. This is different. If the first marble is not replaced before the second is drawn, what's the probability that both are black? Okay. Well, if you are starting over though, uh, and saying, okay, I have a new, this new bag of marbles, three black, uh, five white. First probability that, that both are black? Well, the first probability doesn't change, right? It's still three out of eight, okay? But now that you have drawn this black marble out and it's, you've thrown it over here somewhere, all right? Now this is the bag you're drawing out of, okay? Now they're asking, what's the probability uh, the second marble is black? Well, now your probability is two out of what? Seven, right? Okay, that's different. All right, so your new probability is going to be six out of 56. Of course, you can reduce that by two, so that'll be three out of 28. Okay, and there you go. That's the difference. When you replace, you have to look at how many marbles you have that you're looking for and the number of marbles that are totally in there or whatever else it is that you're drawing from or picking from. All right, here's another. An urn contains four red marbles. Let me just put that down there. Red, 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 red and seven blue. So blue, 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 blue. Okay, two marbles are drawn at random. What's the probability that the first is red and the second is blue 
with replacement. In other words, we draw it and we put it back in. Go see that first. Okay. What's the probability that the first is red right away? It's four, right? Out of seven plus four is eleven. All right. Okay. And the second is blue. Okay. Then this is, of course, ooh, we draw the red one, we throw it back in there and mix it all up around it. Okay. This time, of course, we still have eleven marbles. They're asking this time the second one is blue. Well, that'll be seven out of eleven. Okay. So this probability is 28 out of 121. That's with replacement. All right. This is the new type though. Let's look at B without replacement. Okay. They're asking what's the probability of the first one be red and the second one will be blue. Well, the first one's not going to change, right? It's, the red's going to be still four out of eleven. Okay. But since we have drawn the red, it is gone. It's over here. There's something. All right like this, way over against the corner. It's like a homeschooler at a homeschool dance, staring at the wall with a little cup of watered down juicy juice right there, okay. All right, without replacement, which means we're looking for blue now. Well, we got seven blues still, right? Seven blue out of how many now? Out of 10, right? Okay, because we took care of the one of the red ones. So there we go. It's a little bit different. This will be 28 and that'll be 110. And probably in your book, they'll knock that down by two. So 14 out of 55. There we go. Okay. That's the difference. Okay. With replacement, without replacement. Okay. All right. Try your practice problem. Try, go ahead and pause it and try A and come right back. Okay. A, there is your setup. The factoring. What is the square root of 64 and 81? Boom, there you go. One's plus, one's minus, remember. All right, pause it and try B. Okay, B, not too hard. And look at this, look at B. I put the minus first and the plus second. Doesn't matter which order, you know, we put that in. I mean, three times seven is the same thing as seven times three, so it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. Okay, all right, try C, pause it. Okay, C, there we go, a little more involved. Uh, y to the fourth, chop that in half, you get Y squared as your uh, square root. X squared, of course, is X, plus or minus. Then we have, you might not have known off the top of your head, the square root of 169, but you probably should have known, you know, the square root of 144 is 12. One more, let me try it, 13, boom. Oh, yeah, there it is, okay. Z to the 10th is chopped in half, Z to the fifth, so there we go. All right, try D, pause it and try D. Okay, D, the probability, the first possibility is 16 out of 49, the second, 2 out of 7. All right, pause it and try E. All right, there is your first one, 30 out of 121, because we're replacing that. The second is 3 out of 11, that's reduced. Okay, all righty, hope you guys had fun. See you next time.